Hello and welcome to this video brought to you by the Lois Art. My name is Emmanuel Okafo. I hope you guys are doing well and having a wonderful weekend or had a wonderful weekend. Right now it's 6 p.m. here in the Philippines. In this tutorial, I will be showing you how to create a coily hairstyle inside Blender. I'm aware Blender has the king types or in other words modifiers that you could add to your hair guides to generate coil, um, coily hairstyle. Um, I find this very tricky to navigate because most of the results tend to be very uniform and you don't really get very detailed coily hairstyle. Um, so I basically went on a research to find better techniques to make this work and I'll be sharing with I'll be sharing that with you guys today. Uh, I already have the scene prepared. We have this nice model which I got from ZBrush. And I've gone ahead to I've gone ahead to kind of create this quick eyebrows which I will be sharing you guys this technique in the next video. Um, it's quite awesome because you'll actually be drawing the hair yourself and you'll be kind of seeing a snippet of the kind of practice I'll be doing today. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. It's not going to be a very long tutorial, so that's why I'm taking my time introducing it. Um, okay, so before we get started, there are, there are a couple of things that I need you to have. Um, maybe just one um, and that is called the hairnet add-on so if you're not familiar with the hairnet add-on it's basically an add-on that adds more functional functionality to blender grooming tools and it's a free add-on so the link will be in the description where you can find it while you're in the description you can check out the other links for um, some plugins which I've created and you can see if it's for you okay so this hairnet add-on like I said it's it kind of increases the power of blender grooming tool basically allows you, allowing you to generate hair from plain and from curves and that's what we'll be using for this tutorial okay so uh, let's get started uh, okay so to get started you want to go ahead and add a curve object so add a curve object um, now we can go into the edit mode and selecting everything will delete it now, um, by default, you should have this here, but you want to switch to this curve draw tool. So it's basically like this. You can go ahead and draw your curves. Okay. So we'll just go to the top view and just try to draw some, co draw some coily shapes. So you can just have fun with this. You want to make them look as different as possible. Okay. Just make them look cool. So we want to have lots of variations. So these are basically going to be instance of the coily hair, um, at least the base of the coily hair, because we can still add more modification that can increase the complexity. Okay, so once you're at the stage, um, you're on the right track. So I, I suspect even if you're a beginner, you can get to this point. So now we can go to the curve tool. Um, where's that? I'm looking for select. So we want to go to select and tell it to select the first. So it's just going to go ahead and select the first curve. And now we'll come to this proportional edit, enable it, and we want to check on connected only. Okay. So once you've done that, you can go to the front view and just pull this and slowly scroll your mouse wheel. So you can start pulling all of them up. So now you can even go further just adjust them individually um, if you want to have more coily right at the tip uh, if you want to have it more coily at the tip you can do this just bring them squish them together at the top so I'll bring this down slightly okay so just have fun with it so once you're at the stage um, now we can go into the edit curve edit mode select this hit p to separate and um, if you select this by hitting l to select the island we we'll separate all of them okay so now we want to go outside and do ctrl a apply the rotation and scale so make sure you have the right object selected okay so one more thing before we go we move forward so right now if i rotate this model or if i try to instance or discover what you will get is that it will start generating the curve 
right from the center so we want it to start generating it from the tip here so to do that is you have to tell blend uh, tell blender that by making the pivot point or the origin point to be right here so quick way to do that is going to edit mode select this point um, you can do shift s cursor to select it and when you come out you can go to object set origin to 3d cursor okay so we'll repeat the same thing i have that saved in my quick favorite so i can just quickly access everything so we just want the pivot point to be right at the right position okay so now we can select all these objects and move them into a new collection so i'll call this collection curves and then hit OK. So we have this here. So you could create a collection by clicking new here, or you could just press the shortcut M to create a new collection. Okay, so we're almost done now. Um, the next step is to kind of paint where we want the um, coils to be generated from. So selecting your object, go to weight paint mode, come here and can delete this and click on create a new vertex group you can call this whatever you want but I'm just gonna leave that as it is so I'm going to go into edit mode okay and switch to wireframe and switch my brush to select lasso and I can just quickly select some points and hit assign so if we go into weight paint mode we can see it's selected so a cool operation that you can get used in when weight painting is a smooth operation. So you can just click on smooth and it's basically going to blur out the edges. Okay, awesome. We're getting there. So now I will select this object and go into particle mode and click on new, set this to hair. I will go to the vertex group and select the group which we just created. I'm going to reduce the length, hair length to one and while we're at it i'm gonna switch back to strand okay so what once you are at this position you want to go to render setting switch this to object um just to test out the system first we're just going to select one here we'll tell it to use the object rotation so uh basically if it's using the object rotation the rotation of the object can affect the the kind of instance in the, which will affect the instances so um, what you want to do now is select all of this, rotate it Y 90 degrees. So basically it's going to start facing forward as you can see here. So the next part stage is to just kind of get the right scaling. Um, basically what you're aiming for is to match the scale of this particular guide here. Okay. So we can see they're not matching at all. So. Um, depending on the style which you're going for, if you want a fuller hair, you probably want a longer hair length. Um, I'm not going for s something very long um, or kind of grown out a lot. So let's increase this slightly and reduce this number to like 200. Um, let's say 200. Go back to particle. Um, we'll probably need to reduce the length, so I'll do 0.2. So that's the point four. I mean, we could just quickly check here. Okay, so I like this length, an object, so I can just scale this to match. Okay, so we're almost done now. So I'm just going to switch this to collection and select the curve collection which we created. So we can see we have the, the hair curves coils and we have different variations so you could pick randomly just to get some variety and just have fun with it so for the we we'll also use the children particle to kind of fill out some spot so you could use interpolator that helps you fill out um, more sp spots or you could use um, simple if you want to maintain the original form of the curves which you created so about five um, 
is good but let's see three because we want to make sure that the, the cops you're going to generate here are not extremely dense because if it's dense it's just going to take longer to generate the real hair particle from the scarf so um point uh, about display amount three works for me and well, we can go from there so now we like what we see um you could still go in if you want to kind of have a particular grooming style or you want to you want a particular direction you could do that so i'm just gonna enable this you could do that by actually going in and grooming this the hair so you don't want, need to worry about the styling it's going to be done automatically for you so you can just guide it okay so you can see it's influencing the shape we'll still be able to influence the shape even more later after we do the final step so just a rough shape so let's say you want a nice long coily hair coming down here so what you can do is add the select the add brush from here um, if you click here and do show header so we'll do that again so you just right click here show ed header or hide header so now we have the header i'm going to set the add count count to one and you can access all these parameters right here in the tool settings or item i'm not sure so you can access them here as you can see so you can just add one hair strand so we need to turn up the asymmetry so you can just add one hair strand there and just draw so let's make it long so what's happening here is because The weight paint is not there, so we need to put it somewhere that has like nice weight paint. So increase the length. You can see we have like a hair cuffs coming here, coming down here. So this is one way you could just quickly start controlling this. So like I mentioned. You can see have more ways to control it. So um, once you have this looking as you want, you can go here and apply instance. So before you click anywhere, you want to move all this instance to a new collection. So selecting have it still having all of this selected, you want to press M, move to new collection. Um, you can just leave it as any name. Okay. So we want to hide that, and we want to also hide this. Okay, so now what we want to do is just join all these curves into one mesh by pressing Ctrl J. So you might have this weird thing here, just deleted. Okay, so we are almost there. Now we are going to switch to geometry node panel. So if you don't have this, you can click on plus, um, general, and you should see geometry node. So you just click on that and you have this window so i'm not really familiar with geometry node as i should which i'm kind of working on currently uh but i there's a particular tool which we need from this to work well with the hairnet add-on okay so um, let's first convert this into a curve and the node we are trying to use for this geometry node setup is called the curve resample node so i'm going to select the curve resample node so as you can see we can increase the resolution of each curve individually. Um, importantly, what we need this for is to make sure that every single strand of curve, if I could call, if I could say that, um, has the same amount of vertices because that's the only way it can work with hairnet. So depending on the detail levels which you want to leave in, you could reduce this number, or depending on the processing power of your computer, um, it could influence this number. So really, uh, to be safe, I usually go to something around 12 to um, 0 to 15. Um, so let's say 14. Um, we could still retain those nice shapes, but we are, we're not having it very dense enough. Maybe 
might go up to 16 for this to really get more let's see okay 16 is a good point okay so once you have it there you can now go to object convert mesh okay so it's important you save your file um, the next step would might take longer depending on your ma machine and the amount of hair or the density of everything so that's why you want to try to be, keep things as, as as optimized as possible okay so now we'll have this curve here and everything is prepared now we want to generate the particle hair from this so if you're not familiar with hair it's a pretty straightforward add-on uh, one thing it has some rules which you need to respect like me just um, using the resample node to make sure every single curve have the same amount of particles um, so this resampling node makes a lot of things possible with the hairnet add-on now um, so another rule is if you want to use the sheet you want to make sure you kind of um, establish some scenes to kind of seams to kind of make it um, recognize um, recognize recognize the line it's, it's going to use for generating the hair so if you want to see more on the hairnet add-on i have lots of video in this channel so you could just check or you could request something specific that you want to see and I'll try to make that for you. Okay, so we want to generate um, the curve hair now. So you, you don't need to know a lot. Um, it's quite straightforward. So we'll click on emit hair from self. Basically, it's going to emit the hair particles from this object here. So it's not going to attach it to this character. Um, so once you have that and you have everything set, you can just save your file and click on file but fiber mesh. So you give it some time, um, so depending on the density, it could take 10 minutes, it could take 20 minutes, uh, but the end result is rewarding. Uh, okay, so I did everything right and it just took a couple of seconds. Okay, um, so once you have this nice mess, um, you should know it worked. So we want to select this and go to the viewport and just incre increase the strength step. And uh, you can start seeing the curves there you could increase it if your machine could handle it um, to see more thing you can increase the number of shrimp particles to 50 to see more coiliness okay um, you could play with the radius 0 0.05 should tighten everything so you can really start seeing the curves um, which you want and like I said you could still play with this you could still add more cool stuff so if we increase the strength step in the particle edit and switch to the comb brush and make sure you go ahead and if you go to option you want to make sure you have the strand length and the strand um, roots checked if you need to especially the strand length because if you don't have it you could change the length unintentionally so i'm going to uncheck this roots position so i can be able to move this anyhow i like um, now this will allow me to just go in and modify the shapes into something I actually want. So you could at this point paint more systems, uh, more hair strand and style specifically to match your needs. So depending on the concept which you have or a direction, you can go in and really have full control over most things here. And the cool thing is that on top of all of this, you can still apply some more coils to like more individual strands to create a lot of more complexity. Okay. Uh, so now let's create those complexity. Um, so it's important you have enough subdivisions, AKA the strand steps. Uh, you could play with some cl clumping, kind of have more tapering in certain areas. And you can adjust this. There's something like this. Work fine. Um, you can play with twist if you want to have cool effect. Um, which you have to increase the twist, of course. So if we set this to... Okay, this number is crazy, so I'm going to set this to 30. So if we set the twist to like 0.3, um, we can start having some more randomization. We could, like I said, add more coils. 
So we reduce the amplitude to 0 0.02. We're going to increase the frequency to like 5 just to have more nice um, breakup. So for stuff like this that is petroleum, we probably or definitely don't want it. So we could go into the sculpt mode and grab our comb brush and just move this in once. And it's no longer a problem. Okay, so these are cool stuff you could do. So maybe we want this here. So, good luck trying to create this with Blender's default head particles. Um, okay, so I, I love this look. Um, we could add more cool stuff to it too. So we can add more roughness, especially like flame, flaming hair. So let's set this to like randomness of 7, oh, 0.7. And we'll set the threshold to 0.8. Uh, point eight is quite low, so that's the point six. Just to have like some randomness, um, maybe seven is low, so I'll set one. So it's quite obvious. So all this cool hair here, and yeah, there's something you get from the randomness. Cool. So now we can try to preview the hair, um, like it's going to look in the final setting, at least the shape and uh thickness of the hair basically um, to do that uh, for some reason this setting is not here in cycles but you can find it in Eevee um, basically it's switching from strand to step to actually see how it's going to look in the final render so once you do that in Eevee you can come back in cycles and have it fun have a good nice go with it I actually have a setting for that where basically you can right click and do create shortcut and save the user preference later um, I just press F8 and have it pop up Okay, so um, now we can just go in and adjust the thickness and everything. So to find out, it's, it's located here in the hair shape. If you set this to zero, you can see what it's going to be influencing. So let's do point 0.2. So this is going to be influenced by the star which you're going for. Um, you really want to use reference for stuff like this. Okay, so we know the... Um, we will set this to like one. Just see how it looks. Point four. And for the root, I'm gonna set this to point two or three. Just be able to see the nice cool stuff which I've done. Point two. Point three. <laughs> Most of this stuff it's just like going back and forth and just playing with it till you get something that looks nice or you can satisfy or that works great with the style which you're trying to create. Okay, so now we have this, I'm ready to start rendering. Uh, before the render, I'm going to increase the final amount to about 100 and I can get away with it because I have a pretty good computer. <laughs> Um, I recently got like a 3090. I'm quite excited about what I will the benefits to that. Of course, my pocket is suffering for that, and I'm actually kind of rethinking why did I really need it. Um, but anyway, so far it's paying off, and enjoy myself. Okay, so I have my render settings from what I rendered earlier, so we can use exactly the same thing. Uh, we can quickly preview our material uh, let's make sure we're in cycles so you can select this and go to your material settings and we can just quickly add a nice material that we could use for this so i'm going to select a principal heavy bsf and already it's looking awesome so i'm going to set this to point two to have like a sh nice shiny hair um I'm gonna switch this to melanin concentration. Uh, let's see, make it like a redhead. 
uh, we can have some very color variation and roughness variation just for some realism um, having a reference of course never fails or never gives you a nice payoff okay we might play with the um, thickness of the hair later but that will be left to after that will be left after we see our final render so i'm just gonna hit render i'm using cycus x with 30 actually two gps i had like a 3090 before so the render rendered is like easy cake um using an um, rtx 3090 and rtx 3080 so it's pretty good so this is the result it's not looking bad actually uh, so um, one thing I will probably want to change is to make this a bit more thin, um, um, less thick. Um, so for that, I'm going to reduce the density diameter scale, basically reducing everything as a whole. So it's um, 0 0.008. It's pretty good. Let like that render and. It's fine. I mean, it's a bit. Could be. be it could be less. Um, let's see. It's a couple of things I actually want to do. So point zero zero six, and I will. What What did I want to do? Okay, the subdivision of the render. So we still have it as five, which and we're still getting pretty good re results. So if we need to optimize things for animation, we can definitely go in and reduce this value. Uh, but I want to see how to look in its full glory. Um, so let's render. Okay, it's looking quite awesome. So that'll be it, guys. I'll just do a couple of renders and I will have it on my ad station. The link will be in the description if, in case you want to go ahead and check out the final re um, result as an image just to see for yourself. But this is a nice technique you should definitely try out. In the coming videos, I'll be going to be exploring more cool hairstyles, even the generic male hairstyle. I'm going to be showing you like very nice techniques that you can use for that. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you and your family are well. See you next time and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more from me. Uh, yeah, so bye bye for now. See you next time.